roll up purple drink, but it's soda. Suck it up. Yo, guys, holy moly. Hope y'all are enjoying your quarantine. You know, I would just love to hear what you guys are doing during this unusual time. I think it has been a much needed segment for self-reflection and introspection. And I have to say, I've just been cranking out content. Please like and subscribe because I put so much effort into my content. And this is the kind of video that people will learn from when they see it. So today we are going to look at velocity and impact with time remapping and transitioning to make your edits better. better, better, better. I've been receiving several requests for tutorials lately and a majority have been on this subject. All right, so let's get started right after I say you all know I love creating stuff. It feels great to put my work out to the world, and so it feels wonderful to tell you I just dropped my debut album under the name Shilarius on all platforms. Link will be in description. Whether you've been watching my videos for a while or you're new here, I want you to give at least one song a listen because I worked really hard to produce the album, and if you like my edits, you'll most likely enjoy my music. Alright, thank you, and I love you. Alright, I'm in a new project here, and when I start an edit, I have my folders for clips, overlays, sound effects, etc. And I'm going to be using clips from my man Zao Films, and there's a link in the description if you want to follow along. I also have a few film burns from Cootie Edit's 300 subscriber editing pack. There's a link to that in the description as well in case you guys need some overlays. Now for what follows I am going to be using the Sapphire plugin, but you can do these effects without Sapphire using the transform properties and animation presets all within After Effects. Whoa, really? I have heard most of you guys have Sapphire, but I'm more than happy to make a tutorial on how to do these edits with absolutely no plugins. All you have to do is comment below or hit me up on Discord and if I get enough requests it'll happen. So let's start a new comp and we want it to be 1920 by 1080 at 30 FPS. If you might be rotoscoping later in the project, the last thing you want to do is to do it at 60 frames per second. We're using the song Sriracha by Baby No Money. Let's go, baby. When you know what song you're using, put it into the comp and mark the beats by clicking LL and looking at the waveforms and dragging on markers. Okay, I did that. I'm gonna just double click on my clips to preview them in the viewer here and drag the in and out points for where I want them. Then I'm just gonna drag them into the composition without the least bit concern of their placement. Now listen, choose your clips wisely. I've seen a lot of people use just random clips, whether it's from Apollo Mike or themselves, and those are wonderful clips. Just make sure they connect to each other to tell a story, otherwise it'll lack the cohesion and flow that you're seeking. You want your viewers to feel something. That's why I recommend clip packs. The descriptions of my edits always have links to them. Now that you have your clips in the comp and your song marked up, start putting the clips in order. Okay, now I have these two clips decently lined up. I'm gonna click Control alt t to enable time remapping, and then I'm gonna solo the first clip by clicking this button and determine the spots I want the clip to start and end. Now put a keyframe on those start and end spots by clicking the diamond to the left. Now put those keyframes on the markers so they match up with the speed. And when you're doing this, keep in mind that unless your clips have a really high frame rate, you don't want to drag out a small portion of space because if you do, it's just going to look really choppy because you can't afford to have that much motion slowed down because you just don't have enough frames. When you're trying to zoom in and out, you can just use um, Alt and scroll up or down. <laughs> just uh, cut a clip, just uh, control shift D and delete the other side. Yes, sir. Hey, let's go. Okay, so your keyframes are in their spots, but they are as straight as my phallus when I see your cute ass face. Okay, so they need to be curved out a bit. Select them and click F9. Open up the graph editor here by clicking on this graph. Right click real quick and be on the value editor. Draw an S real slick like your boy one in wet editor. Okay, so actually, really, you want to make the size of this line follow the pattern of being steep to less steep to somewhat steep again. Because that gives you the fast, slow, fast type of flow that you want. This is going to involve a lot of tweaking. Don't rush this and avoid a sloppy S shape that has too much variance. Even though I know some of you like it sloppy. Alright, so you can hop out of the graph now. Congratulations. You just added really clean velocity to the first clip in your composition. Before we add any effects and transitions, let's just do that again to the next clip and open the graph editor. Add the velocity with a good amount of flow. Adjust this real quick. And then exit out of the graph. Looks great. Let's connect these clips together now. You know, this second clip, it feels a bit static, you know, like some tripod type shit. You know, we're going to add some shake, okay? We're going to add some shake 
And I'm gonna use a preset that I made called Mildly Tilted. There are a bunch of presets that you could use to add some movement, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, this first clip seems to start a bit early. All right, so I'm gonna add a keyframe slightly after the clip starts and drag it to replace the first keyframe that I set. Then when you do this, you wanna make sure you reselect these and click F9 to easy ease them again because the graph gets all wonky once you replace a keyframe. Oh yeah, that's a much better start time. Yes, great. First, we'll add blur mode curves to the first clip and add keyframes for the transform properties that we will be adjusting. For now, we can just alter the Z distance, which is the same as scaling a clip up or down. So we'll go 10 frames back from when this clip ends and add a keyframe. To view this keyframe in your layer, just click U, and then we'll go to the end of the clip before it transitions and put the Z distance at a value that somewhat matches the next clip. We're zooming in here, so we're lowering the Z distance value. On the next clip, add blur mode curves and go 10 frames after the clips start and add a keyframe. Now go to the start of the clip and put the Z distance value in the opposite direction of the first clip. Since the previous clip was going in, this clip should start from a further distance and zoom in. Now we have some phenomenal keyframes, but they are quite linear. So have the keyframes open for both clips by clicking U and select the first clip's keyframes and tap F9 to easy ease them. And then with them selected, open up the graph editor, right click, and make sure you are in speed editor. And then you want a 100% influence because this first clip is ramping straight into the next. So click on the right side keyframe in this graph and drag the yellow dot all the way to the right to add that speed. Do the same for the left side keyframe and you should have this skewed graph. All right, now you wanna do the same for the next clip just for the other side. So select the keyframes, open up the graph editor and slide the yellow dots for both sides all the way to the left. And so we got this nice flow going here and exit out of the graph and play that through. If your Z distance values need tweaking, just use these arrows by the keyframe diamond on the left to jump to your keyframes and adjust their values. Looking spicy. spicy. But you want to add a bit of shake here too, I'm just gonna quickly slap one on because I think that will enhance this transition a bit. I'm not gonna cover this in detail because I already made a tutorial on exactly how to do this. So if you wanna do this too, just click on this banner in the top right to follow that quick tutorial. This is a very quick effect. I think it just helps to add some bounce to an edit and give it some life. I'm gonna add this preset I made, keyframe the amplitude for both clips, easy ease these keyframes, and then head into the graph editor and hit up like a 60-20 influence on the graph. Again, this is all covered in my shake transition tutorial. Guys, join my Discord server or add me on Discord. It's in the descriptions of my videos. Like, I love talking to you because I actually, I think you're cute. Like, I, I said it, you know, like, I don't know if I'm, if I'm supposed to say that, but like, like, just join the server, you know? Yup, this is looking mighty spicy. Now, if we're gonna do a transition, then we should just go all out. So I'm gonna add a film burn overlay that I got from Cootie's pack. There's a link to that in the description. And I'm gonna slap this overlay above where these clips cut and keyframe the opacity so that it goes from zero to like 80 to zero. Guys, join my Discord server or add me on Discord. It's in the descriptions of my videos. Like, I love talking to you because I actually, I think you're cute. Like I, I said it, you know, like, I don't know if I'm if I'm supposed to say that, but like, like just join the server, you know? And then I'll scale it up and put the blending mode to add. If you can't see blending modes, click toggle switches and modes at the bottom of After Effects and it should show up. Now we have time remapped clips with a very smooth transition. This is the format that can essentially be applied to the rest of the clips in the edit. So this is the basic fundamental process that you want to have down. You can add variants to this as you wish, and then just put in any effects you want, and you can do totally different transitions too. This is just my go-to procedure when I need to transition in my edit and when I need to time remap. Once you have all this done, just rinse and repeat and you can add these time remaps to all your layers and then just mess around with different ways to transition and get creative with effects. Finish it up with blur, color correction, and color grading and you're all set. If you guys want to see me do an entire edit with several clips and like if you want me to go over time remapping for montages or different types of videos, just let me know and I can go over time and velocity even more. I hope this was helpful. I love you so much and like and subscribe because that'll help people see this video and get better at what they want. Stay safe.
and hydrate. No, drink some tea. All right, I love you. But it's soda. Suck it up just like this should be a pagoda. Bitch, I sense your fakeness like a motherfucking Yoda.